we're standing in front of something that I've just seen for the first time yesterday. And let's face it, the air cam is all about the air experience. So obviously you're looking at an all weather configuration. Sure, sure. We have a number of customers, Jim, who have asked us to come up with a full enclosure so they can fly in cold weather. It's great to fly open when you can, when the weather's good, but certainly it will open up the market for the airplane. What will this involve? Will it be a, a, a totally different fuselage? Will it be retrofitable? What's involved at this point? Yeah, that's a good question. So now, fuselage will stay the same and it will be fully retrofitable. Basically, you've got this blown canopy, and the idea is keep the upright seating position, keep that commanding view, and give you a one-piece optimized canopy so you have as close to the open cockpit experience as you can get with the protection of a canopy. Any idea what kind of a weight penalty you're going to be able, have to pay at this? I really don't want to say just yet. We're not really that close, but we've got enough useful load to handle it. And as you know, the airplane was designed to carry heavy cameras up front, so adding the weight to the nose won't be an issue for us. Now, what kind of materials are involved here? The aft sections that are composite will likely be carbon and epoxy because uh, we want to make them as, absolutely as light as we can. So we'll probably core this and, and use... Um, use uh, carbon. There'll be a window back here. Uh, and then the other, the other components will also likely be carbon. We'll use the solid material wherever we can, but we're not going to take away from the view. The front canopy will slide forward. So you basically you remove the windshield and you get this one-piece canopy. It'll slide forward so it's still going to be easy to get in and out of. That was a big deal. Should be solid in the wind so there's no worry about it blowing away. Then there'll be another section right here that'll be fixed. You'll have a door on, on the uh, right side and then a fixed panel on the left side. Cargo uh, bay so that you'll actually be able to put more cargo in the car with this enclosed than before. Do you envision any performance changes with this all uh, dolled up the way it is? I think we will be reducing the drag. Uh, it's inevitable, but that's not really the goal. The goal is to make it comfortable in nasty weather. And we'll have heat for sure. It's all about comfort. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. It would seem that this might be the one thing you need to really allow it to take a dent out of the public use market. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, we're, we're going to look at that, particularly uh, Border Patrol, aerial surveillance. There is a lot of potential there. The airplane is being used now for quite a bit of um, nature wildlife conservation work. We have a group using one for uh, doing whale research off the coast of uh, Florida. So things like that are happening already. Of course, the National Geographic stuff. Well, at this stage of the game, we're at 2011. This airplane's been around how long now? Really, the airplane, as in this configuration, went into full production like 99. So it's, yeah, a little over 10 years. What's the AirCam population now? I believe we've got uh, about 160 of them flying. What defines an AirCam customer? It's a very interesting group. One category would be airline pilots. Those guys love the AirCam because they're used to having that redundancy, you know, multi-engine redundancy. They get it about flying low. They want to fly low, and they just feel really comfortable. They're drawn to the AirCam. I would say, you know, it's that type of person, the type of person who just loves to fly, understands the, the concept of flying for fun, not necessarily to go somewhere at 500 knots but wants to be able to fly low and be comfortable, be safe. I think we've got it right right now for just for fun, low flying, but we'd like to be able to come up with versions of the airplane that can do other things. We've made a number of improvements in the airplane over the last couple of years. We've really been working on the float operations. The new float equipped airplanes do perform pretty well. When you look at the configuration, one of the things that comes to mind is that the airplane has potential to be re-engineered re as a flying boat. Have you given that any real serious thought? W yeah, we've looked at it and a lot of people look at it and say, it's like a canoe already, it should be out, there's not enough hull area there. We need a fair bit of displacement and we need a lot of aft displacement because 
when the pilot gets out of the airplane, the empty CG moves way back. So we really need like a 21, 2200 pound displacement float, dual floats, to float the airplane properly. And we have a number of floats that are doing that really well. What does it take for somebody to get an air cam of their own right now? What's the building process and selection process and purchase process like? Sure. Okay. Well, the, the airplane comes in two sections mainly. You've got the airframe package, then you've got the engine package. And we encourage people to wait until they're ready for the engine package to get it so that they get the freshest uh, engines possible. And we only really build it as a fast build kit. So it's highly finished. It does meet the requirements for a 51% rule. And then we have an additional option which can really help speed the process, and that is a finished fuselage. And we still meet the requirements with a finished fuselage. That cuts about a third of the build time out. Now build times run from at about 700 hours to build the whole standard kit to some guys will take 1,500 hours. I mean, there's, there's a whole gamut, but you can knock about a third off those times if you buy the finished fuselage option. Freedom through control. Cirrus has completely reinvented the personal aircraft and the entire experience of owning a personal aircraft. It's a bold new take on private aviation that we call Cirrus Flying 2.0. You set the schedule. You chart the course. You're in control. Well, I've got you here. Let's let's chat a little bit because you and I have talked about this business and been a part of this business for quite a few decades. While you haven't really worked the LSA segment from the AirCam standpoint, you've done a tremendous amount of contracting for LSA community and built the number of the airframes that are out here. Where do you see this all going? Everybody wonders, at what point does LSA mature? What does it grow up? Yeah, it's going to take some time, and I think everyone has to realize and appreciate the fact that right as LSA was just starting to develop, we got hit with a massive recession. So as the economy recovers, we'll find out. I think it continues to be one of our best hopes right now for renewing entry-level aviation. I'd like to see some manufacturers figure out how to reduce the cost of entry-level airplanes further. I haven't seen the innovation that I would really like to see in uh, manufacturing yet. I think we can get more labor out of these airplanes and get the price down. So that's the next hurdle to overcome. What advice would you give to the community at large about not only surviving the economy, but building a bridge to the future? Whatever you do, do it right. Uh, or don't do it at all. If we continue to build good airplanes and work on the best possible training, make it available, try and bring more people into aviation. No one has really figured out how to, to get a large percentage, I think the real percentage that we could get, of uh, young people into aviation. They have so many choices today. You know, we're really competing, but still, flying is not like anything else. I think if we can figure out how to get more people to really see what flying is all about, that they'll want to do it. Because nothing else quite matches it.